Remember the first time you fell in love. My first experience with love at first sight was in a classroom. Heart pounding, goosebump getting, nervous and excited all rolled into one. But get your head out of the gutter, cochino. My experience with love was not that kind of love story. I was in love with learning. The reality from my love story was the odds were stacked against me from the very beginning. I was less likely to graduate and less likely to go to college, all because of the color of my skin and the community that I had lived in. Institutionalized racism was embedded in the very nature of the educational system that I was in love with. To make matters a bit more complicated, I was also taught in schools that we now live in a colorblind world. That racism was extinct, along with segregation, slavery, and the dinosaurs. That made it really confusing for me to understand exactly what role racism had played in preventing me and my family from engaging in my education. I also had a pretty turbulent home life. Waking up not knowing when I was going to eat next was a reality for me on most days. For my love to grow, I had to overcome many obstacles and barriers that had threatened to derail most of my family and community's dreams of graduating or going to college. But in my head, none of that mattered. I totally thought I was going to be the exception to the rule. Placed in the gifted program by the time I was in the second grade, I was one of the few people of color in my gifted class throughout the entire course of my academic career. When people first meet me, they fir met me, their first response would always be, wow, why are you so smart? Well, as smart as I was, and as much as I loved learning, there was still something really wrong with my love story. I'm not exactly sure what it was. Maybe I was told one too many times, you know, you're just not college bound, or you should consider getting your GED. But at some point, I allowed myself to believe that because of who I was and what I looked like, that my relationship could only end in heartache. So one day when I was homeless and living out of the trunk of my sister's car, I decided maybe it'd be easier if I just stopped showing up. I didn't have the language at the time to tell you how racism had, uh, how racism had played a role in me dropping out, but I could tell you what it felt like. It felt like exclusion, like I didn't belong there. It felt like I was pushed out, like no one wanted me there. And that, to me, felt a lot like heartache. For better or for worse, being at a school freed up my time to do other things, like the arts, which was a passion of mine at the time. Painting murals paved a pathway for me to get into community organizing, and it was there I learned the language I currently use. I learned that by dropping out, not only was I internalizing racism, I was perpetuating a cycle that would ultimately make it harder for kids like me to graduate and go to college. Learning that changed my perspective about how I wanted to engage. I didn't just want to see changes happen in my community. I wanted to be a part of making those changes happen in my community. And it was that act of feeling heard and being engaged that not only brought me back into high school, it took me to college. Although I never finished college, being engaged forever strengthened my love for learning. So flash forward, and now I've had my second encounter with Love at First Sight when I became a mother. My son's five. When people meet him, their first response is always, wow, why is he so smart? As if who we are or what we look like is some kind of indicator of whether or not we deserve to be smart. But yeah, he's smart. And he likes to read books, and he likes to create art, and he wants to be a firefighter when he grows up, or a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> he loves learning, just like I did. That leaves me both excited and terrified at the same time, because I know firsthand the odds are going to be stacked against him as well. Not wanting him to have the same experience with learning that I did, I attempt to push the boundaries of what it means to be engaged as a parent, just like I did as a student, because I desperately want my son to have more from his learning experience than I did. In my professional life, I'm a community organizer with the Southwest Organizing Project. It's my role there to empower parents and students to move to action on behalf of the issues that are directly impacting them. The issues they identify are the same issues that are being talked about on a national level about how to reform our education system. But while policymakers are talking on a national level about how to reform our education system, it's pretty rare that parents or students are being asked to be at the table, even though they're the ones that are being directly affected by it.
We're oftentimes told that our time would be better spent in the PTA bake sale or the student senate as if any of that stuff has any real impact on educational outcomes. To prevent students from dropping out, students who love learning but have the odds stacked against them, we must be willing to talk about institutionalized racism and how that plays a role in preventing parents and students from engaging in their education. And we must be willing to allow parents and students to be at the table when talking about education reform in a real and non-tokenizing way. The best love, it's the kind that awakens our soul. It makes us reach for more. It plants a fire in our heart and it brings peace to our mind and that's what you give me, or at least that's what Ryan Gosling said to Rachel McAdams in The Notebook. <laughs> but it also sounds a lot like the same kind of love that drives my desire to not only want to continue my education, but for my son to have more from his learning experience. Because my son and all students deserve to experience love at first sight at least once in their lives. Thank you.